Hello, everybody. Oh. Yay. Yay. We're faking it. I'm, I'm not faking enthusiasm. I'm, Zero's faking enthusiasm. I'm, I'm really tired and sore. <laughs> but this episode made me very happy because it's one I've been waiting for for a while. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's not the the one I've been waiting for, but it is one I've been wanting to see animated because looking at it in just manga is difficult because mm. there's lots of action that happened. Yeah, I mean, all right, we'll get we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Yeah, I, I had a feeling you'd have that reaction. We'll, we'll discuss that. Hmm. So. Yeah, there are things I need to say about that. So, um, episode 42? 42, because we started on 39 and we've had four, so it's 42. It's not the answer to mm. life, the universe, and everything. Well, maybe for Kota. It's kind of. Maybe? Maybe. Sort of. He had an epiphany of sorts, so. Yeah. So, this episode starts with Sulky Kota, because that's his entire character trait really that's pretty much just it yeah it's understandable reasonable makes sense for the character but that's pretty much all he got uh mm. and him sulking about heroes are a crock of shit they don't really exist that's not a thing uh and then uh opening basically we we get told what his heroes were basically they were the water hose heroes which yeah water weak hose. Source, but you know you know what their power is water yeah well some heroes do get a little bit um some get lucky some don't yeah they get a little bit uh, focused on what their quirk is and not anything <coughs> else about them whatsoever so that's always interesting just really, really simple hero concepts, but oh well, that's fine. Yeah. So, uh, opening. Na, 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 et cetera. Um, and then we come back to the losers that failed the uh, practical exam. Yes. Um, whining about not getting the reward that everyone else is getting. And uh, Aizawa is basically like, this reason you suck speech I'm giving you right now about how much you suck and you don't have any kind of awareness for what's going on around you and strategy or anything like that, this is your award. So yeah, This is your long-term award of knowing that you guys need to work on stuff because there's a gap between you and everyone else. Yeah, so savor it, schmuckheads. <laughs> yeah. This will help you later on in life kind of thing. Yeah, uh... So they get to the classroom. Monoa is still psychotic, really. Like <laughs> he's like, "What's this? Oh, class A is here, and they have so, have so many failures. Ha <laughs> ha! Class yeah. B only had one failure, and it's like it's it you. was me." <laughs> <laughs> and they point out he did this yesterday as well. <laughs> like this, he does this every day apparently now. He's okay. the like. Like he's the the trope of the like contemptuous character, but then he's also a failure too, mm. and so it's it's just hilarious every time he appears. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in fairness, I, his quirk's kind of shit. It it's cop. Well, like his quirk only works if he's surrounded by other heroes with quirks. It only works if he's surrounded by people that are definitely, definitely, definitely stronger than him. So he's always going to be second rate no matter what he does. And even when he copies them, he's not going to know how to use their power as well as they do. So he's yep. always going to be second rate. He's always going to be a bad fake of anyone else. It sucks. It's, it's unfortunate. <laughs> so like, I feel so bad. If this was a world without superpowers, he would be powerless, basically. Yeah. So... Yeah, kind of uh, sucks. Just checking my notes. Uh, so an emergency happens uh, because they get contacted on telepathy, which there's no reason to do that unless there's an emergency. And the mm. losers basically prove why they're losers because they just sort of chunner at each other while there's an emergency going on. Multiple times. 
Like, they all get contacted via telepathy and they're like, oh man, it sucks how much we can only, like, do the telepathy thing one way, right? That's, yeah, it's so weird, and it feels, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, the telepathy is actually trying to tell them, hey, there's an emergency situation and everyone's fucking dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there is a, there's like, when they get the message, everybody's like, like, once they finally understand it's an emergency, like, oh, and then as I was just no, proceeds to run they, out of it. They don't though. That's there, the thing. there is there is a there is a frame of all of them just wide eyed like oh, yeah. once they actually get it. Yeah, and then they immediately go back to check. Wait, wasn't this supposed to be like a secret and stuff? And hmm, I guess they found a set of yeah. They just go back to talk, talking to each other. Well, <laughs> yeah, they kind of suck, and yeah, it. Actually, I, I appreciate that they're actually verifying yeah. through the actions of the characters that yeah, these guys do kind of suck, and they do actually need all these lessons that we're getting right now. And then they get the message: if you can get, uh, it's I think it's the phrase is even if you uh, find the enemy, do not engage, run away from the enemy at all costs. Um, and at that, Iza was like, okay, I have to go now. This is bad. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, Vlad, keep an eye on them and like watch over them. Yeah, which is he runs out. Inter- interesting because he runs out, uh, gets he sees the smoke and the blue light of the flames that Darby started, um, and gets blindsided by Darby, who is like, "Hey, yeah, you care too much, so." This is going to suck for you. And then Izawa shouts Vlad, at least in the dub. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of like, yeah, we have a villain here. Uh, heads up. But oh, he can't... That's, that's what he was going for. Okay, I thought he was asking yeah, not, for support. Not like, I'm not abandoning the kids and come here, but there's a villain here, so get ready. Hmm. And okay, That makes more sense. Yeah, I, that, that was a little blasted. weird to me. <laughs> yeah. Then he gets blasted with flames, and... Yeah. Um, cause, because if you're going to target people, Isa was kind of a big person you want to get rid of really quickly because that quirk of his to erase other quirks could decimate you. I think it would actually beat everyone on the villain attack squad or whatever they're called. Yes, it, it would beat everyone on the villain attack squad. Yeah, because none of them are metamorphic. They're all just, I have a power, so. Yeah. So it's highly problematic. Or eyes want to be around in this situation. Um, so also, we, go... we could... we about to go uh, to the next scene, or yeah, yeah, okay, go ahead. Uh, we cut back to um, the scene with Pixie, where Pixie Bob is down, and you have the two villains, uh, Magni and Spinner. Who Spinner is the the fanboy Ninja Turtle stain guy? Yeah. And fanboy immediately starts fanboying, like, no, no, let's not kill the one we've already defeated unless we determine that we're properly obeying Stain's ideals and principles. Uh, Tiger's like, hey, don't ruin her face. He was looking to get married and gets mad. And uh, also don't hurt her, but like, still, that's what it said in the, in the, in the sub. It was like, don't mar her face kind of thing. I, th- I think you lost out there. I, I also went back to look at the dub, too. Yeah, I think it's written a lot better in the dub. Yeah. the sound of it. Because it's like she rescued a lot of people and, uh, you know, is living a happy life. And aside from um, looking for a mate, she's perfectly content. So how dare you cut a happy life like that short? And... I really think you missed out if you actually didn't get the fanboy's response, which was... Let me just get the quote because I wrote it down. <laughs> uh, it's not a hero's job to be happy. Which, yeah, fanboy's gonna fanboy, but he actually does have the ideals of staying pretty much down and that heroes are supposed to be lives of sacrifice and mm-hmm. things like that. So, yeah, if you didn't get that in the sub, I'm sorry. <laughs> kind yeah, of sucks. I don't think I didn't. Uh, I... I... I would have to go back to see what the exact wording was for that, but it was more along the lines of don't mess up her face because she's looking for a husband and everything. More so. Um, Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. 
We There's found, a reason why we like, found a significant difference between the dub and sub. And, oh. Yeah. Um. There's also uh, so so they, so they fight Tiger and Mandalay are uh, fighting with Spinner and Magni. Mm-hmm. Um. Meanwhile, Deck is like, I have to go get Coda now because he's on his own and nobody else knows where he is. Yep. Ida is in charge of getting everyone else back to the camp. And Deku is like, oh, yeah, Coda, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so we cut over to um, Kendo and the Class B crew. Kid Fisto. Um, <laughs> they run into Tetsu, 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 yep. who's like, I got gas masks. Uh, Ibarra's here. She has a gas mask. We ran to Momo. She had gas masks. <laughs> yeah, she does have gas masks. You know what else she has? She has custom-made t-shirts with her hero name on them. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't notice that at first. Oh, yeah, yeah, the creating shirt. You know, yeah, she was still wearing that, I remember. That's adorable. <laughs> As someone who has made custom t-shirts with their brand on them, I approve. <laughs> so, so she get, got them all gas masks, and uh, Kendo's like, okay, we need to get out of here. And Tetsu 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 is like, look, Class A is above us. We are, like, we've gone through the same tests, the same training. We're still, like, relatively insignificant compared to them because we haven't really gone through a crisis before. Hmm. And I don't think it's right if we're heroes to just kind of run away from this situation. We can go out there, we can do some good. And Kendo's like, I can't, fine. I can't stop you. Oh. It's my phone. Ignore it. It's Discord. So, so Kendo's like, I have to, like, yes, let's do this. I don't think she actually gave an answer to that in specific for what she's going to do. But yes, we did get a whole speech from Tetsu Tetsu about, we need to be heroes and stuff. Oh, yeah. And... It was, uh, yeah, he said, don't try to stop me, Kendo. And he says, well, I'm going to beat the living crap out of that villain. Yeah. And then and, it cuts away. And, yeah. Another diff- probably, difference between the dub and sub. Uh, it sounds like the dub voice for Tetsu Tetsu has been smoking three packs a day for a long, long, long time. It's all that steel he eats. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. I mean, there is the phrase that your voice sounds like you're goggling nails, so I guess that makes sense, I suppose. Yeah, that's how that's how his quirk works. He needs to get use the iron and steel in his in his blood, kind of thing. So, yeah, it's it's based on what he eats. I don't have uh, many notes left. Like third from the bottom okay. is Momo ordered custom T-shirts. So we cut back over to um, Coda, who oh, right. is that's why because the rest of this was the fight basically. Yeah, facing off against. Uh, big man with a mask. He's like, hey, kid, your hat's pretty cool. You want to trade for this mask? I hate this mask. They really got it, like, last minute because I'm the new guy. Mm. So, <laughs> and I'm just like, you know what? That is a nice hat. No, it's not. <laughs> they both and... have terrible taste. The mask is kind of okay, to be honest. Kind of reminds Jeez. me of that one villain from Bleach. The one no one ever wants to say the name of because no one can do it but me. That anyway, was a big vertical white mask with the holes. Yeah, in yeah. yeah. I'll, I won't try to say the name. Um, so he takes off his mask, and hey, guess what? This guy's the uh, the serial killer who killed Coda's parents. What are the odds? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like a couple of years ago, so actually, it was not that bad. Actually, yeah, yeah a couple of years ago, and also League of Villains. Got a lot of big press, so mm. and you know they, want, they wanted people who had big press and dude that yeah. murdered heroes. That's yeah, the yeah, kind of people they would want. So this uh, this guy's name, I believe the the name for him is actually just muscular. Yeah, they say. Uh, it the, I actually yeah. watched the next episode preview thing, and they say his name. It's muscular. Yeah, so. it's muscular. So. Um, he goes and he's about to just beat down the kid because why not? 
Uh, and Deku jumps in the way hmm. to save him. Yeah. And thus begins the fight. Not entirely clear whether Deku got clipped by that, but he did definitely lose and break his phone. Yes. Which, and he didn't know, tell anybody iPhones. exactly where he was going. He didn't tell anybody exactly where he was going, so he can't do that. Um, he's basically, this is the first fight Deku has to fight against a villain all on his own. Um, with somebody who has a power very similar to his, because hmm. muscular can create like additional muscle fibers to basically increase his speed, attack, and defense. Yep. And 5% isn't going to do anything against that. Yeah, so Deku tries to fight him at 5%, and it doesn't really work. He just sort of has to dodge around for a while. Doesn't do very well, and actually gets hit in the arm, and it breaks. It doesn't show very well the first time you see it, after it gets hit. Yeah. But after that, it's all twisted and gnarled and shit. And it's... The first hit he tried to block just broke his arm. Yeah. Just his... So all he had left was his right arm from the get-go. Yeah, and... Um... We there also was, cut... There was... I'm just going to say this real quick. There was one mm -hmm. really good shot that I really liked, which was um, when Muscular hits the ground because Deku dodged out of the way, but then Deku gets hit by the debris that flies up and smacks him in the face. Yeah. That was a really nice touch because like 99.9% .9 of the time when there's debris and shit, it just never hits anyone, never matters. Yeah. So it's nice that that actually made a difference and you know was put into account. Also... Try to, trying to stop Koda from falling off the cliff hmm. with his teeth. Yeah, uh, Deku has to use 100% to actually even hit Muscular with any impact whatsoever, and he does. Breaks his arm again. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to that. Okay, so, yeah. You were going to so, cut in with a scene with uh, Bakugo and Todoroki? Yeah, it's... Uh, so Bakugo and Todoroki are like, okay, they're, they're basically out of the most of the fog, or the, the poison fog, like, it's pretty thin, so they can just make their way up without having to really cover their mouths too much. Hmm. Um, and they're like, okay, Ragdoll said she was going to go and um, help the others, so we just need to get out of here for now. Who is ahead of us? And you see, ahead of them is the, uh, the guy with the, in kind of the prisoner outfit with the, yeah. his mouth spread wide open yeah. and he's he's a bit creepy there's a hand on yeah. the floor yeah he's he's a bit of a mm, a bit of a mess <laughs> mm. <clears throat> so I'm, uh, I'm kind of expecting so it was it was Ojiro and Tokoyami right Who no it was thing? Tokoyami and uh, Octopus Man right okay Oh, hmm. And Octopus Man can grow additional limbs, so... Oh, okay. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was yeah. like, it was going to be a fake-out and someone else, because... I don't know whether Tokoyami actually has hands, to be honest Yes, he does. he does. He does have normal human hands. It's okay, kind of strange. They're always under the cape, so I can never tell. Yeah, yeah. Tokoyami has normal hands, and then you have the type of guy who can grow additional limbs and body parts at will. Hmm. Uh, so... It's it's more likely it could probably have come from him. Hmm. I I say more likely because I don't actually remember. Yeah. So so we go back to the fight between Tiger and Mandalay and Fanboy and Magna. Was it Magna? Yeah. Yeah. Um. And Mandalay uses telepathy to just sort of distract Fanboy by saying, "Oh, wow, you're kind of cute," you know. Yeah. Yeah. Using telepathy to, to like distract your opponent by talking to them like yeah. in their head while you fight is a pretty good, interesting uh, combo right there. Yeah, because as admittedly that bit in the classroom was multi-purpose, it's kind of distracting on its own is the telepathy and makes you feel weird because it's mm, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they were trying to also do exposition for things that are coming up, coming up in the future, but you know, multi-purpose, that's good storytelling. Um, yeah, so she like says, "Wow, you blushing, dude! Seriously, <laughs> kind of thing." <laughs> You're so naive. Yeah. Hmm. 
And, you know, Magni is a, a wanted murderer. I believe like 29 attempted murders and three actual murders. Hmm. Um, yeah. Also, they're like, where's Ragdoll? Because... Cut to a shot of blood and bits of metal that aren't entirely clear what they are, but... A table. She was at the check... waiting at the checkpoint. Uh, so... Yeah, uh... If you're going to target two people in this particular situation, or three people, rather, you want to get rid of Isla because you can erase quirks. Mm -hmm. Um... Ragdoll because she can locate everybody. Yep. And all of their weaknesses. Yep. And you want to get rid of Pixie Bob because she can create giant avalanches to basically clean you guys up instantly. Yeah. One can take away your advantages. One can create disadvantages. Like, just because they are the strongest person there, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and one is just massive utility for the other side so just fucking get rid of them yeah. yeah very well planned so it was like is Dobby, Dobby in was, charge of this Dobby was in charge of this he was saying it's better Dobby's to have an, dude. it's better to have an elite force like this rather than a bunch of just strong like grunts like mm, Shigaraki like had in the first season yeah like the USJ because if we plan this right we can do this I like Dobby in in the villain kind of way where you, wow, okay, that's impressive and this guy is a real threat. Yeah, yeah. I like this guy. This He's guy kind of good. scary. Yeah. Mm. And we still haven't seen the other three people that, there were, that they had on their team. Yeah. Because um, there were ten of them. Uh, so cut back to the fight. In and fact, I'm thinking one of them's going to be fucking Fang Dude, so I'm not that... <laughs> So I saw the artwork of that guy with just fucking growing teeth, and that's it. And that looks like the dumbest thing ever, so I don't... <laughs> so, Muscular, and uh, Muscular is basically insulting Deku, uh, being like, oh, come on, really, with that? You're saying you're gonna save him? Don't make false promises. Like, that's just lip service. You know? And Deku goes in, Yep, with, he, uh, he decides he can't just sort of he can't run because he, muscular is faster and if he's got to try and carry Kota as well then they're just going to get caught almost immediately so yeah. he has to stop muscular so Kota can get away so that's what he decides to do uh, muscular has him down like at one point and Kota throws a rock at his head and is, mm -hmm. and that is able to basically save Deku from that um, but it's a very brutal fight. Like, Deku is bleeding profusely, and his arm is just torn, and the other arm is broken. Yeah, and then he uses the broken arm again to do another 100% smash, and, um, again, we'll get to it. Um, so Muscular is just still overpowering him, even at 100%, mm -hmm. and just kind of crushing him down into the ground. And Deku is, like, he's realized he's pretty much fucking lost. So starts apologizing in his mind to his mom, which was a really nice touch. And yeah. to All Might for not living up to what he was supposed to be. And then Kota splashes muscular with water. And that creates a distraction which Deku goes... The whole one million ish, percent ish, thing. Ish, ish. It's more of an inspiration thing than a distraction. It's like, hey, this kid really fucking hates quirks, and he used his own. That mm -hmm. was basically his parents' quirks. Both of them. And, yeah. That's like... Yeah, inspires him to do, okay, just go beyond, etc. Um, one million percent... Uh, Detroit, so, Delaware smash. When this was first shown, everybody kind of lost their minds because it was like, what the heck does that even mean? Mm. Um, it was later explained, it is still a 100% smash, but it's the, like, it's the adrenaline pumping through him that's kind of making it stronger. It's the fight or flight kind of reaction, which is also going to, like, you can imagine that's not going to be kind on his arm at all. 
like that's that that's the 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 strength that a mother can use to lift her car when her child is in danger yeah. and trapped underneath it. Okay. That's that's kind of where that comes from. So there's there's a there's an actual explanation for it. It does come off as kind of BS though, and like a like just out of nowhere. Yeah. Power up. See. So that's pretty much the end of the fight, by the way, as well. Though. Yeah. It smashes it smashes the crap out of Muscula, and then uh, Kota does his little inspirational monologue from the beginning. Hey, you're gonna find someone's gonna save you and stuff, and they're mm. gonna be your hero. It's my hero. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, this fight, uh, I want to like it. I do. It's not the most clever fight. It is it's power very, versus power. Here, here's my super move. Okay, here's my super move. Kamehameha, yes. beam struggle, shit. And this is <sighs> this is one of the only fights i think in the entire show that's just power versus power and trying to overpower the other and the other opponent like there's a lot of very smart fights in this show and the way they use their quirks and everything together um but this one i think for me when i first saw this in the manga the real tension for me was because i remembered oh wait if Izuku uses 100% smash, like, he was told, like, if you do that, like, a few more times, you could permanently lose control of your arm uh, back in the tournament. Yeah. Because that's how badly he, he hurt himself. And then he does it again. Yeah. So that uh, was the... Question. The, the, Are there long-term consequences for this? Like, real ones? Uh, there will be some heavy scarring. Um, which he has already. Heavier, far heavier. Uh, it's it's he's it's not like he's going to like be unable to use an arm or anything after this. But this is the last time he uses a full one hundred percent smash uh, without being able to control it. Hmm. Okay, yeah, it, it was it was disappointing. I feel like there were ways it could have been a smarter fight, like. I don't know, uh, smash the cliffside so Muscula loses footing or something. Like, the problem is Code is there. Yeah, but just like attempts at something, like just to be a bit more true to Deku's character that overthinks everything, he's just, he doesn't seem to be thinking at this point, which is a little yeah. disappointing. And, and it's kind of hard when you're fighting, fighting at somebody who has the same kind of power as you, they, they could have done it, like, it could have been done smarter. Uh, but this was... This is just kind of the start of this arc, I guess, really. Um, there's lots of other fights to happen, but Deku's got out of the way kind of pretty fast. Uh, this was kind of a... What do you do if you meet somebody who has the same power as you? This is the only time that just punching it harder will kind of work because yeah hmm. not the hmm. smartest fight but there's lots of other fights still to come hmm. um, there's still Ochiko and Sue are about to get attacked by uh, Toga there's still the guy creating the poisonous gas there's still there's lots still, of villains there's still the mouth yeah. Um, muscular, I believe. Like visually, it's it's a very astounding fight. In terms of the actual thought process, the processes behind the fight, it's very simple. Hmm. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Yeah. This this isn't something that would bring down the whole show. This is just uh, tonally. This is a little bit more. Naruto Shippuden, Dragon Ball Z. It's it's the it's the most shonen the show has ever gotten. Yeah. So, like, I understand, you know, the the whole like that viewpoint of, yeah, it like, it could have been like the show is normally really above normal shonen. Hmm. It just kind of dipped back to shonen for a bit, 
for that fight. Mm. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. Not necessarily. It's just, yeah. But it's not going to be, like, the way everything goes from now on. Yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the rest of the, uh, of seeing everything else get animated because mm. there's still a lot of good things ahead. Mm. So, final thoughts? Those are pretty much were my final thoughts. That's pretty much all I got. Like, Kota, as like a mini arc for a character, you know, dealing with things, aspects of the setting, Mm-hmm. And the profession that aren't really, or haven't really been dealt with so far. Yeah, pretty good job. Apparently, people really hate that character. Like, I was, I was not aware of that. Yeah, some people really do. Um, some people, I, I've seen some people say that the uh, the muscular fight is their absolute favorite. Um, I think my absolute favorite of what's been animated so far is still probably uh, Todoroki and Deku. Yeah, I mean, that. in fairness, that's also a little bit similar <laughs> in how, okay, it's, I'm going to use my super moves until I break my arm, but yeah. It's similar, but there's also the aspect of... It, it's not De- about winning the fight, was the point. It's Yeah, it's not about winning the fight, and that's kind of what I really like about that. Yeah. It's it's one of the few cases where you can have your protagonist lose and there still be everybody's happy with that. Mm. Which was cool. Mm -hmm. I still love the the tournament arc, the sports festival. That was great. Yeah. Um, There's going to be like a few more of them apparently because it happens every year. Are they actually going to do the whole three years? Because that's surprising if so. Um, I think they're actually uh, close to being done with... Well, no, they're like, I think they're currently a little bit more than halfway through the first year in the manga. Okay. Culture Festival is the thing they're doing now, right? Yes. That's usually done in the autumn. Okay, so they're they're getting closer to the end of the year. Um, But, yeah, they're probably going to do the full three years. And then possibly uh, a sequel series where they're all adult heroes. Yeah. Uh, got which, yeah, I would like to see a sequel series where they're all adult heroes and Deku's trying to be the number one hero hmm. and cool. climb his way up the top. Hmm. Anyway, so that's the episode. Surprisingly flawless recording. Like usually, there's all sorts of technical hiccups, but no, it's fine. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's remarkable. Oh, also, enough we that forgot I to, to mention. Muscular was asking uh, Deku if he knew where Bakugo was. Right, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently they're looking for Bakugo. Not entirely clear why, but oh, I know why. I'm an idiot. Um, yeah, I may have looked a little bit ahead as well. Um, also, funnily enough, they do look kind of similar, actually. <laughs> yeah, I've had people say, are they related? Mm. Yeah. No, no, I don't think so. No. If if they were related, their quirks would have some sort of similarity. Yeah. The it's Presumably. kind of genetics. Hmm. I mean, <laughs> unless he's like a distant cousin. Could be. But hmm. anyway, yeah. his, his muscles have explosive power. Maybe he could. I don't fucking. Know. Anyway, I was. I, <laughs> I was going to go there, but I stopped myself, and then you went there anyways. Oh, I just go beyond. That's, that's, that's what Plus that is. Plus Ultra. Okay. Yeah. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.